Um, hello, so today we are going to do this problem called count and say, which is part of Fleet Code April Daily Challenge. So the problem says we basically count and say is the sequence of digits defined by a recursive formula where the base case is one, but then for the other numbers, you would say the string, s say the digit string, and say how many before it. It's complicated to read the description, so let's just take an example. So if you take this big example here, so how many two threes? We have two threes, right? And then we have three twos, and then we have one five, and we have one one, right? So as we say it, right, when we are reading, we say, uh, we say how many in the shriek, and then we say the number. And so, so here, two, three, right? Three, two, one, five, and one, one. And you get this. And this is sort of a known sequence. If you Google in Wikipedia, just count and say. So count and say Wikipedia. Yeah, look or look and say. It's a known sequence, right? And these are uh, examples of numbers. So for one, it's just one. And then for uh, two, it's one, one. For three, two, one. So one is read off as one, one, right? Because for n, you read n minus one, right? And so for two, you read one. What is one? One is just one, one, right? For three, you read two. What is two? Two is just one, two, like one occurrence of two, and then one occurrence of one. So that's why you end up with this. For four, you read <coughs> you read this occurrence. So it's a one, one, two, one, 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 two, right? And then uh, two ones. So every time you count the streak of the uh, a number of the number, right? So that's the idea, and the base case is one. So if we t take four, um, four we look at three. We look at three. Three is two one, and so we count it. It's one two, and then one one, and to get three even we look at two, and two is, um, is two ones, right? Two of one, so that's why we write it as this. And for one, that's the base case, it's just one, right? So that's the idea. Um, now let's see how we can solve it. So you can see here what I did when I was um, reading this sequ large sequence. It's I just read this as, okay, we have three twos, uh, sorry, two threes, so we add two three. We have three twos, so we add three two. So we can just handle it as sort of a streak of occurrences and code it that way, right? So basically just keep track of how many in the streak and then count. So l let's see how we can do that. So uh, what do we need? Well, we know our base case is for one. And then we want to, to be able to get, for example, four, what did we have to do? We had to go up all the way to four, right? But for four, we needed all the numbers up to four available. So here, my for loop, since I already have the case for one, I won't do one, but I need to do from two to n. And so in Python, to get to n, I do n plus one. Um, so I need to keep track of my current streak of numbers, right? Because um, if we take a look at this example here that we have, uh, three, three, two, two, five, one, right? So we need to keep streak how many threes we have, right? So first we have just zero, and then we encounter C. So to be able to tell once we advance here to the next I, to be able to tell whether this is uh, part of our streak, well, we need to, um, we need to, um, we need to have a previous something that tracks the previous. And for each step, we need a result because for the next iteration, so let me just grab this here. Um, so for each previous iteration, um, so for each, for each number, we need to do it for all the numbers before it, so that's why we have this loop, right? But for each of this, for each i, we need to look at the i minus one and read count it and say it, right? And so that's why here, so basically this is for each um, count and say. And this, 
this for loop here would be for uh, for reading the i sequence. For reading the i minus one sequence to get the i sequence, right? And so what is the i minus one sequence? We will keep it in S, right? And so we'll read that one. And res would be um, the i sequence we obtain, the ith sequence, right? And S is the, S will keep track of, this is the i sequence sequence, and S will keep track of the ith minus one sequence, right? Each time. Okay, so now we read the i minus one sequence, so we can obtain the res sequence. So we need to read a streak. So let's actually use it for. Let's use this to one. <laughs> um, or maybe let's go all the way to five, right? So what is count say for five? So for five, it's one one, right? One two and two one, right? That's if we take a look at Wikipedia here. Um, that's the number, right? So wh how did we do it? Let's take this number. How did we do it? So the streak first is zero. Now we, this is our C character. So this is S from the previous I minus one sequence, which is, um, which is, um, four, right? And so our previous is empty. Our res is currently empty, right? And so now we look at C and we find, uh, we want to check if it's equal to the previous, but the previous is empty, right? If pre since previous is empty, um, we want to increase the streak by one. And we want to, so basically if previous is empty or the previous is equal to C, in this case, we just want to increase the streak by one because we don't know yet if the streak ended or not. We could have had one here, right? Okay, but what should we do in the else case? We will get to that soon. So now we go, we, we need to assign a prev to this character, which is one. Okay, so in the end of our if else, we need to assign to prev C. Okay, um, and what should we do? We shouldn't add two errors yet because we wanna know if we had, let's say three here, we wanna add three ones. We just, we don't wanna add one already, right? So we advance our C. And now C is different than prev. Now it's different. We should take, we should add this to the next sequence. We should say we found one, one, right? And so that's why here in the else, we want to add at this point. But what do we want to add? We want to add that we found one, one. So we want to add the count of the streak and the number itself. And so how should we do that? Well, the count is just the streak. So we should just say, take it and convert it to a string. And then we should add the character. What is the character? The character is in the in priv, right? So we should add it to priv. And so here this will become one one now, right? Because streak is one and priv is one. But we should also um, reset our streak because let's say we had three ones. Our streak would be three. We shouldn't continue when C is here. So we should reset our streak to one. Um, but here we are lucky it's only one, but just in case if it was more than one, we want to reset it. Okay. And now the prev is equal to C. Um, okay. So now with C equal, so we, we've done for C equal to two, we advance and, but we assigned prev to C. So prev is now two and now it's different again. So we are here again. And the streak is one, so we, we do this. So now it's one and prev is two, so it's one, two. Right? So it's one, two. So, so far, so good. Um, and now our prev becomes one. Our streak is reset to one. And we advance. Now this one, C is now equal to prev. Right? So since C is equal to prev, we should go here and increase streak by one. So now our streak is two. Um, and now we are done. So this would be in our for loop for every character in S, right? And we did it for S here for four. 
to obtain f the uh, the sequence for five. So what this tells us to do here is that when we finish the sequence, <coughs> we haven't taken care of this streak yet. So at the end, because we want enter the uh, this if again, uh, we want to do uh, we want to add it. So we want to say res plus um, the streak. So we want to just do this um, here for the last one, for the last case. And then we can just redo it for the new sequence. So this would be the core here of, of, our, uh, of our function here. So this would be for the for loop here. This is the logic we need to do. Okay. And now res, we want it to be, we want res to, s to be res because we are going to do the next sequence and for that next sequence it needs to use just the one before it, right? And then at the end we can just return s. Alright? Um, we just need to define prev as well here. So it starts out as empty string. And that's pretty much it, right? Um, so let's run this up. Okay, so that looks good. Let's submit. Okay, so that passes. Um, yeah, in terms of time complexity, this is just O of N. And N is really small, it's like 30. So it should be pretty quick. Um, and here we do it for every character. Um, so uh, I, I suspect they won't be too big. Um, yeah, so 20, they increase to 10 to the power of 3. Um, so yeah i suspect 30 maybe 10 to the power of 4 or something and so that multiplied by 30 is still doable right um yeah so that's the logic here um we can run it on another example just to make sure it's super clear so let's run it on this 2251 so we'd have these values here okay so streak is starting as zero this starts empty and this starts empty right so first we have one three we advance prev now is equal to three we advance they are still equal so we just increase our streak we advance to two they are different now so we need to add the number of the streak of prev to our res so we have two threes um, and now we reset our streak and prev is still three now for two, um, it's different than prev, so we just increase our s set our streak, so we already set it, um, and then we advance here. Now it's equal, so we increase our streak. Prev is two, um, and now we go again. It's equal to prev, so we increase our streak, uh, and prev is still two. And now we go to five. Now it's different, so now we want to add that we found three twos. Right, and we want to reset our streak to one, and our prev becomes five. Right, and then we advance again. It's different, so we need to add this five to our res. So we found one of five, and so we add here one five. And then one is different, right? Um, and so our prev becomes one, our streak is one, and then at the end. We will add whatever was the streak and the prev value, so it's one one, and that's pretty much the end here. And that's the same one we got here, two three three two one five one one, right? So that's the idea here. Um, now, one thing we wanna actually the that it's easy to do with is group by in Python. Um, let me show you why. So let's take this number here, or loop here. So print a and then list of b. So you can it will group the numbers, the consecutive numbers. Group by, you can give it a function, but if you don't give it a function, it will just group by a sequence. Uh, um, it will just group by numbers. So it will say for the first one is three, is the key, is the number, and this is the list of the elements of the group. The second one is all the twos, successive twos, the key is to the and so we can just actually take the number and then take the length that's exactly what we want we want the length of the streak and then the number and so we could just use that um, instead of doing our custom streak logic here um, so to do that we'll just replace this code here 
with um, of, with just um, doing the group. So res is empty, and then we'll just do um, iratools dot group by. And here we want to group by s, right? And that will just give us. We can just do uh, basically take the number and then the length of the list. So that would be just the length of the list. So let's call this list or B. B is fine. Um, so this would be just the length of the list plus the number. That's exactly what we want. The count and then the number. And we replace for the next sequence. And then we return S at the end. Right. So that simplifies the logic a lot. And let's submit. Cool, so that passes as well. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for today's problem. Uh, please like and subscribe and see you on the next one. Bye.